Good morning. My name is Dale Hawthorne. This is a follow-up video to my previous video, One Bible Verse to Know for Authority Over Satan and Demons, Part 2. Part two. So, thank you for all the views and the likes. That video was kind of off the cuff, very brief. I just wanted to give people a reminder in the evil of this world. There are a lot of views, a lot of likes. There were some also some others who uh, did put some uh, strange stuff in the comments, but uh, uh, considering the number of views that I had, uh, I didn't have to uh, block many people. I want to do want to make sure that anyone who makes a comment legitimate uh, doesn't get insulted, and that uh, I'm not gonna uh, put this let people uh, insult the, my viewers and myself in the comments. So I encourage you also watch the entire video if you have questions and the longer one and then go to my blog entry too if you have questions if you don't think i'm handling it well um, i do answer a lot of things which uh, deal with context which deal with uh, what means in the longer form this video was pretty much for people who already may have heard of this verse but uh, maybe forgot about it but with the evil that we're experiencing in the world i simply was reminding people that, that this authority is there for them and very definitely um, the video and passage isn't about snake handling I did have a couple of comments on that it's not about that if you don't think that it is take a look in um, verse 17 previous context verse 20 um, um, other uh, later context and talking about spirits and demons there metaphor 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 so that's what it's talking about nothing about snake handling i am not part of the snake handling church i do have a friend who uh is attending one of that denomination but they don't do snake handling there uh, i believe it's only really done in some parts of appalachia so and the authority you can see here um it really does continue after the mission verse 19 was pronounced after the mission as the mission was completed this uh, verse 17 they completed their mission they come to jesus and um, it says that it's given there and it's not just apostolic authority um the 70 or 72 whichever uh um number is given there there there's some ambiguity in the manuscripts um but the it isn't just apostolic authority 70 72 and uh continued afterward according to church history you'll find people um continuing to use the name of jesus for 2000 years when dealing with explicit demonic activity. Now, speaking about explicit here, not our sins. Our sins are not demons. Other people are not demons, although they can come influenced by them. But when we're speaking about demons, and uh, it seems like a lot of this is a reaction to some people who were making really a lot more of this than it than, uh, is, you know. And I, yes, I do read verse 20 that uh, salvation is greater than this authority i do go over that in the longer videos so we're also going to look here at a prequel to this also which may give some additional uh, illumination um, this is uh, luke chapter uh, 10 verses 17 through 20 verse 19 and also we're going to be looking at luke chapter uh, 9 verses 49 through 50 going to come up here highlighted yes um john answered master we saw someone casting out demons in your name we tried to stop him because he does not follow with us jesus said to him do not stop him for the one who is not against you is for you yeah this happened before the mission this is in chapter 9 the mission of the 7072 takes place in chapter 10 and we don't know who this man was we don't have a name given here um, but he was apparently a believer in Jesus, had some contact in Jesus, and he um, perhaps saw the apostles trying to cast out demons in Jesus' name. Uh, maybe um, before this, uh, there was a case where the apostles tried to cast out a demon, but they were uns unsuccessful. And apparently there was some sort of uh, embarrassment, perhaps, on the behalf of John that uh, um, they were unsuccessful, but he was in casting out demons with, with this name. And the man who was doing this was an apostle. He does not follow with us. That's one of the reasons why John tried to forbid it. 
He wasn't an apostle, wasn't part of that little group there, the 12 who had explicitly been given the authority, but apparently um, the authority carried through to him and, you know, John's embarrassment uh, there, you know, he being successful. Yeah, he was being successful. Um, the commentators say, you know, there's no indication that he was any that the, unsuccessful. As a matter of fact, uh, um, John says he used to, this was what he was doing. And Jesus then, in verse 50, do not stop him. For one who is not against you is for you. And the uh, uh, parallel passage in Mark says, you know, no one can speak evil of him who has done a mighty work in his name. And so this is someone who was, Jesus forbade made the apostles to stop him from using his name to cast out demons. So this man was apparently successful. He's apparently a believer. Otherwise, there uh, probably would have been some kind of counterattack, which is uh, spoken about in uh, the book of Acts, where the two two or seven sons of Sceva, it, it's a little bit ambiguous how many there were, but probably two, and they try to cast out a demon. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? And the demon attacked them over power. So uh, there probably would have been some sort of un counterattack or un just simply a lack of success, which is not named in the passage, but apparently he was being successful. So um, this is another passage besides uh, Luke chapter uh, 10, which is overlooked. But uh, again, I will say finally, prayer is not casting out demons. If you're talking about prayer time and you're spending a lot of time rebuking Satan, you're missing out on a lot. I'd encourage you to look at John chapter 14, 15, and 16. Look at the pattern of prayer that Jesus left us in John chapter 17 in the Lord's Prayer. Prayer, if the majority of your prayer is coming out in rebuking Satan, um, I think you're missing out on what prayer is. And uh, you may be uh, saying a lot more than is really necessary for the situation. So I leave that to you to consider and think about and look at the other parts of Scripture. And I don't have any part of any group which is spending a lot of time trying to teach people to be apostles. I don't have any sympathy with them. I do believe that the authority of the apostles for putting down things in Scripture and special authority was given to them. But I believe that, I think if you look at the, at the passage in context of the whole Scripture, you'll, you'll see that uh, we do have an authority. We're not going to necessarily use it um, that much. And we do a lot of if we uh, do a lot of uh, boarding out of this stuff, we may need to think about uh, where our own life is. How faithful are we being to Jesus? Are we in his word? Are we just imitating things we see other people say? So that's all I got right now. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for all the views. Thank you for all the likes. Again, you know, I thought when I first recorded it, I thought maybe two people might see it. So I appreciate all of you that have shown your support and uh, hope that uh, we might uh, continue to love and build up each other in the faith and in the time. So thank you.